Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is appointed. Appointed. Now you see all that fruit? Might look rather tasty. Look like something you'd like to have. But you know, as we see so many times in scripture, we know that bearing fruit is something that is very important. Uh, being fruitful, uh, that we can you know, we're fruit inspectors, right? I've often heard that, right? We're not to say you don't judge anyone. That's correct. But we are fruit inspectors. And so you can tell if somebody's not bearing fruit, then you can wonder about what's going on inside that that plant, that tree. Uh, you also are only going to see fruit that lines up with what kind of tree it is. So you're not going to see bananas on an apple tree and vice versa. So since we know that, then the Christian will only bear Christ-like fruit. We will only bear godly fruit. Now, what does that have to do with what we're talking about today? Well, John chapter 15, he is dealing with uh, another great I am statement that Jesus says, I am the true vine. And we have to stay connected to him. And, and then you think about it, that's the only source of power that we have to be able to bear fruit. But see, as he goes throughout this, this whole passage, and, and as always, I encourage you to read the whole chapter, you, you look and you'll see that it, it has to do with being attached to him, uh, abiding in him and he in us, uh, that relationship. That's the only way, right? The only way we're ever going to bear fruit is if we are connected to him. And, and there are times, right, we can be Christians and be saved and then also uh, decide to live a life that doesn't please him. Uh, right. I mean, we we backslide and, and we get away in our own sin. And, and that's when that fruit can't that can't it can't actually grow. Uh, we're we're strangling it from actually getting the nourishment that it needs to grow and, and then to thrive. But let's also remember this, that we know that fruit is not eaten by the tree that's producing it. It's by others. Right. It's consumed by others. The fruit that we have within the body of Christ is for others to consume. Now, having said all of that, talking about the way that we love one another, it's amazing how Jesus ties that back in again. Remember, this is all still one conversation. A lot of what we've looked at this one this week has been one long conversation from Jesus. And here in verse 16, just one verse today, John 15, 16, he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Now, he, he, he throws that right in the midst of loving one another in the same ways that, that he has loved us, much like we've already talked about. But he says, I have appointed you to bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain. In other words, he says, and he's talking specifically to the disciples here. If we're going to take it in context, he's speaking specifically to the disciples. But the same great truths, truths apply to us. I mean, the same way that in washing the disciples feet that he was showing a servant's heart and, and, and then also encouraging them to serve one another. The same way that they had to be connected to Christ. To bear fruit. We have to be connected to Christ to bear fruit. He chose those 12 disciples and, and he chose them to bear fruit. He chose them. Now, I know a lot of times you think about uh, and, and you get some predestination in there. You think about, well, did God choose us? Well, no one comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. Right. But God, in his infinite wisdom and his divine knowledge, already knew the choices we were going to make. But even through all of that, as he says, I have chosen you. And here's the key today. I have appointed you. I've given you a job to do. Right. I mean, here we are, uh, you know, elections over and, and there's still a lot of those things that we think about people being appointed to certain positions. You know, we are elected some to positions, but Jesus says, well, look, I, I'm, you don't have to worry about getting elected to go in these positions. I am appointing you to this position. And the position is that of one who bears fruit. Now, that's true for every believer. It doesn't have to be one of the disciples here in the story. He says, I've appointed you to bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. So it's not a one-time thing. You know, the good fruit trees will bear fruit and bear fruit. 
season after season. Yes, there's some times where they need to be pruned and trimmed and, and taken care of. And sometimes that pruning is, is painful in the moment, right? And it takes some work. But what it ends up being is that you could be more and more fruitful. Man, this, this imagery is throughout the Gospels and, and throughout the New Testament. And, and so even as we think about the fruit of the Spirit uh, in, in Galatians, that we understand that, you know, it's salvation. Uh, the fruit is salvation of other souls. But it's also that fruit of the Spirit. And it's also just simply tied together in, in a godly disposition, if you want to put it that way, a godly attitude, godly actions, godly words, uh, the way that we deal with others. And that's why he includes it here that you love one another the same way that I loved you. So if you're going to bear fruit, you got to be willing to lay down your life for your friends. And that, that's what he talks about. No one has any greater love than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. And he calls us his friends. We need to follow his example. And we need to remember that we've been appointed to this task. Once, you, once you're a believer, once you're a child of the king, you have been appointed to a task. And at the top of that list is to worship him and is to give all the praise and glory to him. And then after that is to go and tell others about him. Right. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul and mind and your neighbor as yourself. But remember your neighbor as yourself in the way that I have loved you. That's the only way we're going to bear fruit. But you say, that's not really something I want to do, not something I really feel gifted to do. Well, if you're born again, you've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit who gives you the power to do it. And it's much like many of us and in, uh, in our lifetime have probably faced, and even my kids, as I tell them many times, they've been voluntold. We have been appointed to bear fruit. So will we do what we've been appointed to do? It starts with the way that we love God and the way that we love others. God bless you, and I pray you have a great, great day.